Hey guys, welcome back. Okay, so now the biggest sporting event of the year, the Super Bowl is just around the corner. Two awesome AFC NFC games. What did you I know Andrew obviously <laughs> you have a lot to say. You know, and we should actually start by mentioning that Andrew and I actually predicted that these two teams would be in the Super Bowl. I don't like week four? Yeah, five, something way like that. Long ago. So um, I just want to mention that we were correct on our predictions. Um, <laughs> I don't think you two were. But <laughs> no, no, I, I definitely like Denver, um, but I'm pretty sure my NFC <laughs> pick was up and down all year. So, but yeah, I definitely thought Denver was going to make some noise. I'm glad they're there. I'd love to see Peyton do it one more time, but uh, I'm surprised that Seattle is there. I mean, you know, they have a great defense. Not really a great road team. You know, they're great at home. They didn't lose once at all, all year. That's a, it's a big deal. So a, a big playoff win at home, of course, but it should be a great game, you know, you, your number one offense versus your number one defense, and that's what you want to see as a football fan. I'm going to let Andrew start. <laughs> Just let yeah. go. Right. Well, obviously, like Taylor said, I picked this correctly, but you know, <laughs> if you guys Whoa. watch this, that I am a Denver fan, but looking at the way we played against the Patriots and all throughout the whole playoff, I mean, this defense has came up to play. I mean, they only, they're averaging... 16 and a half points against them which is huge because early in the regular season it's like up in the 20s mm -hmm. yes, but I mean if you look at that game against the Pats I mean 35 minutes of time of possession versus 24 against the New England Patriots I mean the one way to stop the Patriots is not have Tom Brady on the field and Patriots up to this point were able to run the football well, effectively held them to only 64 yards, including LeGarrette Blunt to only six yards, where he had that huge game against Indy. So I'm excited. Like Brooks said, number one offense versus number one defense. It's going to be a great game. And I assume everyone knows who I'm picking, <laughs> but. <laughs> uh, I just think Peyton Manning, this is best playoff game of his career. 400 yards, two touchdowns. And at one point, he was 19 of 21. In, in the second quarter, he was on fire. Brady, I'm happy he went down. <laughs> he did was not Brady this game. He only, had, uh, he only had 277 yards and a touchdown. That's not Brady. Like, he torched the Colts. Well, the whole team torched the Colts, even though Brady didn't have a big game. But Garrett Blunt, only six yards. On five carries, no Patriots running back really played that well outside of Vereen. He was catching balls while he had the backfield. But, yeah, Peyton deserves this because he's a class act and – I think he's one of the best quarterbacks of all time and serves one more and go out on top. I also feel they had a great running game with uh, no Sean Moreno. Uh, mm -hmm. He's a great back. He opens up everything for the receivers and the tight ends. So I feel that no Sean has been a very important piece all year. Um, in the beginning of the year, I thought Monty Ball or one of the other guys was going to go by, Ronnie Hillman possibly. But no Sean kind of took the job and ran with it. So if he can run like the ball like that in the Super Bowl or even you know remotely open up the offense, Peyton's going to be able to pick this team apart, and uh, but I feel that Seattle is a team that is built on speed, on you know rushing the quarterback. And let's be real, Peyton's not a very athletic guy. <laughs> he needs that pocket to be secure. A little more than Brady. So if they get him and hit him in his face, and he, you know he does that Peyton thing where he starts patting the ball, and he's like, oh, you know, oh my God. So we'll see. But I'm definitely rooting for Peyton Manning. He's uh, the quarterback, and uh, I, you know, I mean, we can talk about Richard Sherman. Sure yeah. That up. yeah, speaking of, okay, we have got to talk about this 49ers Seahawks game. I think it was, I <laughs> thought it was going to be the uh, Brady Manning matchup that was going to be most exciting, but leave it to Sherman to prove me wrong. <laughs> um, what do you guys think this means for Colin Kaepernick and his future? Obviously, he's negotiating a new contract. So, do you think that his contract is going to be kind of hurt by not taking his team to the Super Bowl? I mean, personally, uh, we all know that I'm a Dallas fan, so, I mean, Tony Romo's been there for 10 years. And oh, God, don't get us started. Kaepernick has been in the league for two years, and he's, uh, you know, he's 21 seconds away from his second Super Bowl appearance. He's got a great coach who is a quarterback himself. I feel that there's a reason why he drafted them. There's a lot of talent there. He's, he's one of the you know, future style quarterbacks. He's a runner, but he can also throw, but he needs to work on his throwing. Um, I do believe you, he's your franchise. I believe you go with him. I don't I don't think you let him go. If he wants that payday, you pay him. 
I completely agree. I think Kaepernick is the shiftiest quarterback. 11 carries, 130 yards on the Seahawks. You don't, the Seahawks don't allow that very often, if ever, on that defense. I would pay him whatever he wants because I think he is the best dual threat. Better than Cam Newton. Ten times better than RG3 because he can actually stay healthy. And, and yes, Brooks, I completely agree with you. I'm also a Detroit fan, and Stafford's been there half as long and done the same thing a few years in a row now. I mean... I agree with you guys. I think Colin Kaepernick should be signed to a contract extension, but I disagree with you, Pierce. I don't think you should give him whatever he wants. I think he deserves a decent amount of money. I mean, he's yes, this is he was close to another Super Bowl oh. appearance, and but I mean, his throws he's inconsistent. I mean, you see some of his throws; they're like they're throws that look like unbelievable throws one second, but the next second. You just need a taller guy covering one of his receivers so they can pick him off. And then that first down and 10 inside your red zone, you don't throw a fade route with like 21 seconds and two timeouts. Develop something so you can win the game. I mean, he's going to be a great quarterback in the league, I feel, but he still needs some work improving his passing game. Right, but I mean, it's 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 a good start. Yeah. Oh, I mean, oh, yeah. he's got many road wins. I mean, Dual threat quarterback. I just think that he's going to be one of the best very quickly. Hey, also, back to and Andrew, your point. Frank Gore was not showing up that game. He had 11 carries for 14 yards. Where else were you going to go? I mean, I mean, I agree with you that Frank Gore needed to step up and some of his receivers. But at the same time, I'm in that deciding moments. If Richard Sherman's covering Michael Traptree, I'm sorry, My Richard Sherman is probably the best corner in the league. I would not I throw it. It, over to Michael Cabtree's side, even on a one-on-one. -on -one. I would maybe just throw it out of bounds, live to fight another yeah. down, because it was first down in 10. Yeah, uh, I mean, do you, are you saying that you, I mean, it, at that point, it was the 49ers game to lose. Yep. Do you, you are thinking it wasn't his fault, or you think it um, was his fault? Uh, it's kind of Kaepernick's fault for throwing it that way, but I think Sherman just made a great play on the ball. If it was like like half an inch to the outside, Crab, uh, Crabtree was the only one who could have caught it. Like uh, Sherman's made a great play. He's six three, long arms, and just tipped the ball back to his guy. And it's, you know, going off that, um, of course, that very famed interview he had oh with geez. Aaron Andrews, um, where he said he was the best corner in the game. I think he <laughs> scared Aaron Andrews a little bit. But um, <laughs> a little bit. Do you guys think that that statement is true after making that play? Do you think he is currently the best corner in the game? Yes, he leads the NFL with 12 interceptions over the last two years. He's 6'3", he's a new style corner. He could play receiver if he really wanted to, but he's, I think, best corner in the league. He can definitely back it up with his trash talk. He, he knows how to scare people. <laughs> and, yeah, he is by far the best corner, bar none. I mean, like I said earlier, I believe he's the best corner in the league. I mean, just the way he plays, he's, I mean, even without getting picks, he'll deflect the ball or... He even goes up and tackles running back at the line of scrimmage, which is essential for a cornerback in this league. And, I, I mean, who else is there to compete with him? I mean, people say Darrell Revis. I mean, he's not the corner he used to be ever since that ACL tear. And plus, Darrell Revis never really tackled anyone. He is more of a flashy type of guy, in my opinion. So, And other than that, I don't see anyone else in the league that's even close to Revis Richard Sherman right now. Um, I, I'd like to see a healthy Revis. Um, I think that Revis is still one of the best corners in the game, if not <coughs> the best. He's 1A and 1B. I mean, they're, they're two different styles, like you said. Like Pierce said, he's 6'3". He's a different. He's a bigger guy. And then you know, like you get Revis Island. I mean, the Jets play to just leave him alone with your number one receiver. So he doesn't really have to come up into the box and to make tackles and tackle your running back because I feel like they run a different style of defense. I mean, I would take either of them on my team because we don't play defense. <laughs> so um, I think Sherman is a great guy. I mean, I, he also had a lot of fuel in him for this game. I don't know if everybody knows, but he used to play for Jim Harbaugh and passed him up in the draft. So when you have that personal mojo going, you got a little extra juice saying from when you can't do it. And, you know, I mean, he's going to do it. So yeah, he's, he's a pro bowler. And let's be real. I mean, the NFL stands what? Not for long. I mean <laughs> – if you're going to go out there and talk trash and back it up, I have, there's nothing I can say. If you go out there and you stop me for 60 minutes and you tell me you're going to stop me, 
kudos to you, man. You're the win. You win. You're the best. Yeah, I completely agree. Um, so I know, obviously, you're picking Denver. Hmm. Denver as well. I'm leaning towards Denver, but I will not be shocked if Seattle wins. you got beast mode Marshawn Lynch, who I think is the second best running back in the NFL. 24 carries, 102 yards, and a touchdown. A, his touchdown was 40 yards. That kind of put the nail in the coffin, I thought, actually. One of the nails in the coffin in the San Francisco game. I would like to wait to pick a score, possibly. <laughs> but since, uh, I'm definitely picking Denver. Denver? Okay. I'm, uh, but if I'll go early, I might change my mind. <laughs> but I'll go, I'll go Denver 28, Seattle 24. But if it's a snowstorm, it's going to be like 63. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys. Well, thank you for tuning in. We'll catch you next week.